Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary Sanch and I'm a graphic designer and illustrator from Canada. Today I'm going to show you this sketchbook which I just finished. Um, this is a Winsor & Newton 100% cotton um, little watercolor sketchbook. Uh, it has perforated pages so you can take them out if you want to, uh, but I decided to keep this one all together uh, as sort of a little sketchbook. I decorated it in a previous video and did this welcome page in a previous video as well. But moving on inside, um, this sketchbook I used to sort of play around uh, quite a bit. I did a lot of uh, sort of exploration, um, trying out the cotton paper, seeing what it can really, really do, like in terms of color and, and granulation and mixing and uh, wet into wet and stuff like that. So uh, these polka dots I actually painted as part of a project for my mom. She wanted a logo done for her crafting company, so I did up a logo for her blog and her Facebook page and stuff like that and used some of these dots as as part of the design suite that I made for her. On this side I was just testing out a few different watercolors. These ones on the bottom in particular are from Core. These are the transparent um, red oxide or brown oxide and the transparent yellow oxide. Um, these are some peaches that I painted in gouache and you can see here um, basically the te technique that I used uh, was to lay down the the first color um, in a wet wash uh, that sort of blends into into uh, each other so you can see the the feathering along the edge of the shadow going into the lighter plane of the peach that's created by putting wet gouache right next to other wet gouache and you get a little bit of a blend in the center. One thing with this 100% cotton paper is that things stay wet for a longer period of time so you have more flexibility than you would with a cellulose paper to get these really soft gradients. Um, with watercolor you're going to probably get more of the um, dendrites or feathering look um, and also more of uh, sort of that ring, the ring around the watercolor. Um, you don't get that as much with gouache but you are going to get these really soft gradations um, and they're really really fun to work with. So I chose for this page I chose peaches because they're a fairly simple um, shape. They're just a sphere basically. Uh, so you're just working with a dot and then you don't have to worry about what shape you're trying to make because obviously it's just like a dot which leaves you more time to work with the paint while it's still wet rather than um, having to do lots of details. And then the outlines are just painted on after the rest of it has dried. On this page I was doing some practice for a demo I'd like to do at some point in the future um, which is basically just how to paint um, a, a night sky in gouache. I still haven't figured out exactly how I want to present that video, but if you would like to see that tutorial, please, please, please let me know in the comments below. It really helps me get a sense of of what you do want to see on this channel. I'm not prolific enough to get to everything, um, but I promise I do read the comments and I do keep things on on my little back burner list for when I need video ideas. Uh, this one here was just, I don't know, a quick watercolor doodle, sort of trying something with a little less detail and a little more color blocking. This page here is kind of neat. Um, these here are done uh, with watercolor um, markers. So they're water soluble brush markers. Uh, and when you add them to water, the ink splits. And I have no idea if it's going to focus and show you here, um, but around this color uh, here, which is sort of a brown marker, it actually splits on one side into pink and on one side into blue. So it almost looks like, um, you know, designs made for 3D glasses, like the old school red and blue kind. 
Um, and I think that's interesting. It's because markers are, are made of ink. Um, they separate in water differently than, say, watercolor or other water-based paints. This side here is just a bit of um, some observational drawing uh, done with paint um, and stuff that I, I wanted to practice, like leaving negative space uh, in the painting rather than filling everything in. So the highlights on this shiny armadillo are done just with leaving white space. So that was sort of fun. Over here, um, I bought myself as a treat a tube of Daniel Smith's Amazonite Genuine, which is really beautiful. Um, and I just, I always like to swatch new paints when I get them to see just how they separate and granulate and behave. I especially like how you get these sort of softer blue greens here and a little bit of like a brighter turquoise around the edge there. Super pretty, super nice watercolor. I think this is one of my favorites of the Primatech line um, that I've bought so far. I really thought I was going out on a limb, like buying a brighter color, um, but I'm sure, you know, buying something like the Sugalite or the Fuchsite, <laughs> that's basically just glitter. Uh, but anyway, the Amazonite, I really like. This painting here is one that I did en plein air. Um, this video is on my channel if you want to watch me paint this painting. This is a little dinosaur. Uh, he's about, ooh, I don't know, 10, 20, probably close to 20 feet tall. Um, made of concrete, actually, and uh, maintained, oh, I'm going to bet for almost like 50 or 100 years. He's probably so old um, and so scientifically inaccurate. He's charming. I love him. Uh, I smile every time I pass him on the way to work. So this painting is dedicated to funny dinosaur. Um, <laughs> And definitely check that video out if you want to see it. This side here, um, again, just sort of playing with the paper and what it'll do, creating some blends and gradients. Um, it's just really calming, uh, and I think it looks it looks super cool, like just as a page, just color like this. Um, I've been leaning a little more abstract in in some of my explorations, and I'm having a lot of fun. This page here is also um, practice for a future tutorial I want to do, which is how to paint faces and skin tones. Um, and I can't decide if I want to do gouache or watercolor or both. Um, depending on the technique, you do have to take different things into consideration. So I'm just, yeah, practicing. I think this one is actually done in... This is done in my Kurataki Gansai paints. So... Yeah, um, I'm still working on that. I just, I want it to be good and I want to give you guys really good information. So I'm not going to rush that one, even though people have requested it. It's coming. It's, it's in my brain waiting to, to come out. Um, this is just another looser test for skin tones. Um, just testing some wet into wet with like these, uh, pinker tones on her cheeks and stuff like that. Uh, doing some... Just some leaves for fun, you know, sort of a chill thing to do. Often I'll doodle aimlessly like this while I watch other YouTubers' videos, get caught up on my YouTube homework. <laughs> this side here, um, I bought a few new brushes at the art store recently and I was just testing them out. Uh, basically, I, I wanted to get some inking brushes. So they're very long um, in order to hold lots of ink in the bristles uh, and let it out slowly. So you can draw a little bit longer uh, than you would with a flat brush or um, an angled brush. And uh, because this one is so long, you can use it to do really precise uh, straight lines. Uh, it's, it's often called a pinstriping brush and you can get them even longer than this. And then this side here uh, is just testing out one of the pans from my Kurataki 
Gansai set. Uh, just a really beautiful, beautiful seafoam green. Um, and it comes in the pan like this, and I don't even have to do anything to it. <laughs> Isn't that so nice? This page here, I was trying something new as well. I wanted to try to get bird paintings that are accurate to the species um, and easily identifiable while also being only like one wet shape with the pigment dropped into it. So this is a larger one, um, but I think the smaller ones actually worked out better uh, because you know, you're working with the size of the water molecules, right? So to keep a blob this size, all one wet blob is easier to do because it's smaller. This one, you need more water. There's more chance of it drying on one side and not on the other. Um, as well, when you're working smaller, you can work faster. So I just, I think this little nut hatch turned out so good. I'm so proud of this tiny, tiny guy. <laughs> um, anyway, that's really fun. Um, now this is just a sticker from Sticker Mule because I got some stickers produced, which you can buy in my Etsy store. Um, and on this side, uh, I just did a study of some olives, a really nice sort of purple color, uh, mixing it with complementary greens um, to bring down the, the darkness uh, and uh, mute the reds and, and violets a little bit. So just playing with complementary colors for this one. Uh, and I think it turned out really pretty. This is again in Gansai. On this page, uh, this stuff here, I was testing out these watercolors right here, the um, Dr. P.H. Martin Hydrus watercolors. This color is the Venetian brown. Um, it looks a little different than the label, but this is this is how it dries. It's a very warm brown. Um, and this is just dripped into a puddle of water. So you can see how it, how it spreads and uh, what it does with the paper. I'm looking forward to integrating more randomness uh, and more mediums like the hydrous watercolors into into my practice and it's going somewhere I'm, I'm working on it I'm just uh, it, it needs more percolation um, on this side uh, I painted a dimetrodon um, or dimetrodon however you want to say it a Permian creature from long long ago and I just think he's really pretty I kept it to just purple and yellow um, two complementary colors for this one and gave him sort of a, a predatory grin and a dark eye. This page here obviously is my watercolor swatching video page and uh, just on the other side here I swatched some of the sets that didn't make it into the video. Um, this is my De La Rowney Aquafine watercolor set that I just got from Walmart and this green actually, um, I don't know, like I've had it in my collection and I don't use it a lot but when I swatched it that day I was like oh my god I love this, it's so bright, it's so crazy bright. Um, and this is my small Pfeiffer Art Supply handmade watercolor set. And uh, this is an Uji no Tsuya tea bag tag, like from the tea bag. Um, and that's their Genmaicha. And I just thought it was really nice and how the greens went with the other greens. So whatever, you can use your sketchbook for whatever you want. But I also partly put it in this so that during the sketchbook video I would recommend this tea to you. It's so good. Um, you can find it at Asian supermarkets, uh, which is where I find it because I live in North America. But yeah, the Genmaicha, oh, it's so good. So toasty, so warm. Go buy some. <laughs> so this is that green from the De La Rowney set um, mixed with the yellow, of course. But look how vibrant that is. Like, I think even the camera is picking up just how bright and limey and lemony it is. And I don't know, it just it's a happy color. And on this side, ooh, yeah, you can see that really well when I tilt the page. Um, so this fish is painted, I think, in uh, Redwood Willows Prussian Blue Luxe, I believe. Uh, and 
topped off with some gold from, I think this is Fine Tech, the Fine Tech Inca Gold, I'm pretty sure. Uh, super pretty, um, super fun. I think, like, honestly, I think the gold embellishment stuff is really good for sketchbooks because as a medium, sketchbooks are something that you are moving and you are flipping through. So you're going to get the full shiny, shiny range of that gold. And I just think that's really fun. I revisited the dots from the first page using some of my, um, I don't know, I consider them my problem paints uh, because they are either um, made from pigments that don't mix well or made from pigments that granulate strangely um, from my handmade watercolor palette. So so mainly it's this um, copper turquoise, which has sort of more of a, a chalky texture to it. And you can see how it interacts with the Prussian blue and makes it all like speckly. And uh, the Victoria green, this pale green here, uh, also interacts a bit weirdly. So I just wanted to see what it would do and, and how it worked out. Uh, it worked really well with the um, uh, nickel titanium yellow, uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, just, just playing around, seeing what sort of textures I can create. And this side here uh, was just testing some wet into wet and uh, just seeing how the texture forms there with the dendrites and the, the granulation and, um, you know, this is the sort of thing that I'd like to incorporate into backgrounds for my pieces, you know, learn how to influence the paint to naturally create natural patterns and um, sort of landscape suggestions, like not a detailed landscape, but like if you cover that part, like that could be the far edge of a lake with the trees reflected in the water, right? Um, <laughs> so that's just something I'm keeping in my head and working on. And I took it a little bit further uh, and did a bunch of scratching and scoring into this last page. I did a big wash, you know, I blew paint out with, with breath, with air. Um, I did wet into wet here. And then over top, right at the very end, I worked in some details. So combining the random um, and the natural, the way that the water just wants to make the paint work, and um, combining that with detail that I can control. So I bought more of the Hydra's watercolors to play with that a little bit more. This is how the Payne's Gray reacts um, with water. Looks awesome. This is the sap green, uh, this is the Venetian brown again, and this is the sap green in a more controlled gradient. And then I tried, over here I'll pull it out, um, a, similar, a similar approach to this page where it was all wet and there was scoring and there was brushing, uh, and then just adding the details on after. This one I included some of that, um, the brown uh, liquid watercolor. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's going somewhere. Like imagine this as a basis for a wildlife painting, right? You know, it's um, taking my work in a slightly different direction. Um, is it marketable? I don't know, but it's definitely making me happy. So it's something worth pursuing. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour. Um, the end, <laughs> it's over now. Uh, and if you have any questions or any comments, definitely leave them in the comment box below. Until the next video, I hope you guys have a great day, and thanks for watching. Bye!